So there certainly is a risk of arbitrary enforcement and potential discrimination. And in talking with you, Jackie, I can really see why those who are doing crafting videos are particularly concerned about this kind of enforcement. You matter so much. Without you, we cannot win this. This is by far the most important video I will be putting on this channel because if we don't take action by December, in January 2020, many crafting and art channels will be gone. For those of you who don't know, YouTube was recently fined $120 million by the FTC for serving up personalized ads to pretty much who they thought were adults, but kids were using the adults app in order to navigate the platform. Even though this is a law that's going to be passed in the US, it is going to be implemented on YouTube as a whole. So whether you are a creator internationally or in the US, you will be 100% affected by these rules. So what are these rules? Pretty much anything that seems child appealing will Will be deemed as child directed. Look, look at these, I'm gonna be using a lot of air quotes. So this makes it really scary for those of us who are gaming or crafting or doing arts. Because kids have diverse hobbies, anything that is child content will be monetized in a completely different way. In other words, more demonetized than monetized. And Philip DeFranco describes it in the best way possible. Right, so essentially imagine you go into work and your boss says, hey, by the way, in January, we're gonna pay a uh, 60 to 90% less. Not only will our videos be demonetized, but the comment section removed, which means we cannot communicate. I love communicating with you grains. I love joking and interacting, but these will be disabled if the machine believes that my content is kids appealing. On Twitter, Bluebird describes this perfectly. If YouTube thinks your content is aimed at kids, for example, if you use dolls, kids toys, etc., they'll cut off personalized ads and you won't be able to comment on videos and you'll have minimum engagement with the creator and the creators won't be earning anything, basically. What worries me the most is that the category of child appealing is so broad. It includes things like the type of music used in your videos. A lot of us use pretty uppity type music. The types of colors that are on your screen. That is really worrisome. They also said slime type things. Last I checked, the King of Random did so many different slime type experiments. Are these for children? No. Are they educational? Yes. Are they family friendly? Yes. And that's where the line of family friendly and child appealing becomes really blurry. And so thousands of other topics are going to be heavily impacted, namely the arts and crafts community as well. You are not immune. So things like dolls and squishies and craft kits will be child appealing. And so it's really scary to know that even though as creators, we can say that whether or not we are targeting kids, the rules are still very vague to say that if it's child appealing, it might automatically be child directed. See the problem here? If I'm not targeting kids, but if it's appealing to kids, the machine might actually put me as child content. Less monetization, no comments. So the issue here is instead of looking at what we're doing with the item, it's probably going to be looking at the item objectively. Hey, here's a doll that Dollightful is transforming into a work of art, which is a blank canvas. Nah, that's a doll that's for children. Demonetized. Hey, look, here's a squishy that Mariah Elizabeth is turning into an upcycled new work of art. Nah, it's a squishy that's for children. Hey, here's Nerdy Crafter reviewing a craft kit to make sure that those with the buying power can make informed decisions. Nah, bro, that's a toy that's for kids. Are you using colored pencils by Crayola to make a review or trying to make an epic piece of art that is also deemed child appealing potentially? What if you're drawing an anime character or some kind of Disney character in your work of art or sculpting a Disney or anime character? Well, guess what? Characters are deemed as child appealing. All these things in the back, I'm a dork. It doesn't take that into consideration. It's just going to see characters and automatically classify them as toys or child appealing. And so as it is, the rules right now are going to harm so many of us on YouTube. And when I talked to someone at YouTube and told them that what I'm doing is helping adults make informed decisions, they said that it's the topic of craft kits that I should be staying away from. So even YouTube is worried about this, which means I should be extra worried about this. And trust me, Grains, today I really wanted to make a very different video. I wanted to craft or review something, but if I didn't put this out there, I would be a hypocrite and not trying to help and not trying to help. I really want this community to stay alive. I still want to make videos. I still want to interact with you, Grains, and I want all of us here in the arts and crafts community also to get together and make sure that we don't lose what we've worked so many years on making a bigger community. We can't let this rule pass as it is. And the good news is we can take action 
action if we work together. By the way, for this next part, I'm going to be saying the word male and female quite a bit. In no way is this discriminatory towards gender identity. Please understand, I'm just using these terms as in the traditional sense. And if you think about it, in the arts and crafts community, the topics that are deemed child appealing are mostly female type content. And so the FTC is putting female type content as childish. So if we're into painting and squishies and dolls that we're transforming them into works of art, they are potentially going to be flagged as child content, child appealing, which makes absolutely no sense because many of the creators in the arts and crafts community do use things like power tools and machines. How is that fair for female type hobbies to be classified as childish? These are topics that also take a lot of work and practice to perfect. It's almost like they're saying, save the women and children, and yet now the boat is sinking, but they're letting us all sink together. Female topics are not childish topics. Let me be clear. The collateral damage of this new FTC rule is going to hurt female creators because of our female type hobbies. Again, I am not saying that there are male creators who don't do this. I'm just saying that it's that category in itself is hurting a lot of us female creators. Just think about it. Think of your favorite creators who are doing arts and crafts. And so even though when I talked to someone at YouTube again, they did say that we can appeal the decision by the machine, that decision is not reversible. Now, probably some of you are like, but Jackie, what's the point of appealing if you can't reverse it? My guess is that YouTube wants to protect us because if the FTC thinks that our content is child appealing and we didn't do the right decision, we can be fined up to $42,000 per video. You heard that right. If we we said we are not targeting kids and the machine doesn't catch us, but then the FTC watches our video, we can be fined $42,000 per video that they think is child directed. Because they could be like, ha, you're, you're using a squishy, which means that is for kids. No. As a creator, I love, again, I'm gonna say this, I love YouTube. I want to protect it in every way possible, but I feel like YouTube has its hands tied because it wants to follow the law. However, the law can be changed if we work together. And that's why I need you so much right now. So what can we do? There are links in description box below in order to comment to the FTC. Don't click yet. Don't click. Wait, listen to me. Listen. The FTC actually wants to hear from both creators and viewers on YouTube. They are actually really open to hearing our arguments, which means that if we can make smart, well-argumented pieces of comments, the chances of overturning the rule as it is, is pretty high. But we need thousands of comments. There's also a petition in the description box below. If you're not sure what you can discuss and what points you can discuss, there's also a link for a document in the description box below about different talking points. Please make sure that you are polite and make sure that your sentences are clear and coherent. And all of these links were given to us by Jeremy Johnson, who is currently a non-practicing attorney who's been at the forefront trying to change these rules and meeting with the FTC. So please, please, please be as polite as possible because the FTC wants to learn. They don't know much about YouTube, but they really want to learn about it. And this is where we come in as a community to educate them. What does YouTube mean to us? And how is it that girly topics are not childish topics? So we really need you. So let's send them thousands of comments so they know that personalized ads are not a bad thing either. I personally would rather get an ad for the new sculpting tool than a horror movie. Or if a parent gives permission to a kid to use their account, that is consent to get personalized ads. Because the other thing is, if you are watching crafting videos, regardless of your age, if YouTube deems it that is child appealing, you do not count as an adult anymore watching these videos, it will count you as a child. So we have to make sure that these kinds of topics are not put in directly into to child appealing or child directed simply because we're using dolls or craft kits or art supplies. For those of you who are still naysayers and really want to have more information on this, I had an interview with Jeremy asking him some of the questions that are really important to the arts and crafts community as well as some of the vagueness of the FTC. The rules are so vague, that's what makes it scary and according to Jeremy, also unconstitutional. Because even though I am not personally targeting kids, what is child appealing if I am not targeting kids? And what is the line between family friendly and child appealing. So please, please, please today send that comment. Sign that petition. And so enough jibba jabba on my side because I am so, I'm so invested in this.
In all seriousness though, I really don't want to lose you grains and I don't want to lose what we've built here together. And so I want to introduce you to Jeremy Johnson. He's also a creator here on YouTube and he has a family vlog channel. This is an interview we've had together, so bear with me here. Hey Jeremy, please briefly tell my subscribers about yourself and your channel. Hey Jackie, thanks so much for letting me be a part of this video. So I'm Jeremy Johnston, I have five little kids and five years ago one of them came up and wanted to watch some videos on YouTube and I started searching and I came across family vlogs which looked like just home videos to me and I was amazed that millions of people were watching. As I dug deeper into it and kind of saw the genre and what it was all about, uh, we decided it was something we wanted to do and so we feel really blessed today. We now have two billion views on YouTube, two million subscribers. As I've learned about what's going on with the FTC, I've wanted to speak out and let people know what's happening and what we can do to try to make a difference. At the time that we started YouTube, I was a civil litigator, a practicing attorney. Since we've gone full-time to YouTube, I'm no longer actively practicing and I'm not intending any of this to be specific legal advice for you. I'm just sharing some of my opinions as I've reviewed these things. So we all know that the FTC is worried mainly at child directed content, but that term is really vague. As someone who does arts and crafts for an adult type of content, so sorry, I'm trying to talk here. So even though I'm doing a crafting and art channel for mainly adult type viewers, I was pretty alarmed at the article that was released by vidIQ because it said that there were thousands of topics that would be affected by this. So even though they briefly mentioned slime stuffs, Technically, slime as a topic is a scientific topic. It is a chemical reaction. But there are also hundreds of channels that don't necessarily just play with slime, but they also focus on different reactions with different ingredients. And I use the example of King of Random. In no way is King of Random targeting children, but of course, kids have so many hobbies that they really enjoy that will they watch it? Yeah, they could. I'm rambling, I'm sorry. So now my concern really has to do with the arts and crafts community. So we use materials like squishies dolls, colorful pencils, craft kits, and so on. As it is, with the vagueness of the definition, do you think that arts and crafts fall under the risk of being put under child-directed or child-appealing categories? One of the big problems with the government regulating content is no one really knows where they're going to draw the lines. They haven't defined clearly what child-directed means, but they have given us 10 factors we can look to to see whether or not our content is child-directed. The problem though is even within those 10 factors, it's unclear how we should measure those factors or define them. For example, one of the specific factors is whether or not you are featuring celebrities that children like to watch. That raises all kinds of questions. You know, like for me with our channel, we know that we have a lot of viewers. We don't know exactly how many of them are kids. Does that mean that we are celebrities that children like to watch? And if so, is it based on how many subscribers you have or how many views or what percentage it is? And if it is based on those things, where do you draw the line of when you are a celebrity or not? That's just one example of the 10. Another question is what's the subject matter? And so what subject matter is child directed or not? You know, within crafting, if you're talking about colorful pencils or slime or different things that children may be attracted to, does that count as subject matter that is child-directed or not? No one really knows. So there certainly is a risk of arbitrary enforcement and potential discrimination. And in talking with you, Jackie, I can really see why those who are doing crafting videos are particularly concerned about this kind of enforcement. A lot of the crafting videos include things that are attractive to children, but will that be considered child-directed? No one knows. And that's a big problem because when we're facing the kind of penalties that could come about with this regulation, you want to know whether or not you're breaking the law or not. Another category that worries me is the idea of characters. Would creating fan art of a cartoon or animated character also be put under the child-directed or child content? It's a really good question because any type of content for a general audience is going to do some things that are maybe more specific or attractive to children. So for example, with Aladdin coming out recently, if you were doing a craft that was around Aladdin, the FTC could come and say, look, this is child-directed because you're doing something about Aladdin. Okay, Jeremy, this, this part here is what bugs me the most, and this is the part that I feel very strongly about because I know that even though it is not directly targeted at female creators, it is collateral. Many of us here in the community do use colorful things, art supplies, craft supplies that could be child appealing, even though we are not necessarily child directed. So I feel like many traditional female type content and hobbies are put into the childish categories. And this scares me because many people use arts and crafts as a way to deal with their own anxiety and just have a hobby. 
hobby. There's nothing wrong with having a hobby. Art and crafts is not just for children. So as a female creator in an already male-dominated platform, it really feels like if these rules pass, we as female creators would have a harder time climbing the ladder and making content that we enjoy naturally. Again, I am using the terms as male and female in the traditional sense. Please, Grace, understand. I'm just, I'm doing these. Trust me. I grew up playing with action figures. All right. Okay. Here's my question. So as it is, the FTC's vague rules will mainly affect female creators in the crafty and artsy space. Is that a stretch for me to assume? Given, of course, the vagueness of the actual definition of child directed or child appealing. I think that there's certainly a risk and a concern about discrimination and this being unfairly regulated against women. I think it's especially scary if the FTC does decide to expand the regulation of COPPA to include not just child directed content, but child attractive content. I think it's fair to say that children may be more drawn to or attracted to stuff like crafting or other things that female creators are primarily talking about or making on YouTube. And this is a big deal. This is part of why we want to talk to the FTC about this and let our voices be heard that there's big concerns about them trying to regulate content, especially when they're using a law that's all about privacy. COPPA is about putting parents in control and protecting their children's personal information online. But instead, the FTC is using it to remove parents from the process and ignore parents' choice. We know from the statistics that 81% of parents let their children 13 and under watch YouTube. If parents are consenting to that, it isn't something where we should come in and punish creators. And when we start regulating that content, the government is on dangerous ground of starting to have discriminatory regulation. My next question is, for channels who are not directed at children, but who would be flagged as child appealing and potentially child directed, if we lose our comment section and even our monetization, what would happen to the platform? I've been primarily talking about the FTC and the concerns around government regulation, but there are a lot of unknowns and a lot of questions about how YouTube is going to come in and police this situation as well. I think it's unclear right now how YouTube would look at a review of a arts and craft kit. One good thing about the way the regulation is set up is that it will be video specific. So say that that video was flagged as being more for children or a concern about that, you could potentially lose comments or personalized ads on that video, but that doesn't mean that the whole channel is going to be shut down or impacted because of that. And the good news is, Jeremy, is that the FTC wants to learn about it. So there are different steps that we can take here, and you really did put quite a few resources together. Grains, by the way, these are going to be in the description box below, but Jeremy really did put things together. And one last question. YouTube says it'll treat any view from child appealing content as coming from a child, regardless of your age, whether you're 25, 45, 65. If they deem a topic for children, even if you're an adult and you enjoy crafts and arts, you will be categorized on YouTube as a child viewer. So the question for you is, how will this impact our content? Does this mean that the person view doesn't count for us as creators? Yeah, it's very difficult how little control we have. And it's ironic because what the FTC has said is they're changing their enforcement to now consider creators as operators, as though we're running our own website. The problem though is that we don't have any controls over the operation. So for example, on our channel, we make documentary content that we never intended to be directed at children. We wanted it for a general audience, but we don't have controls over what YouTube does with that and how they suggest it. So they started placing our stuff on YouTube Kids and people are watching it there, but I have no control over what's on YouTube Kids or who they're suggesting those videos to. So it is frustrating if this can come up to harm us or lead to us being considered child directed over things that we don't have control over. The other thing too is we know what our intent is and who our intended audience is. But if they expand this regulation, that becomes less of a factor because they'll just be looking at who's watching or enjoying the content. But again, we shouldn't be looked down upon just because kids also enjoy our content. I wanna make family friendly content. I'm okay with the fact that children find our content clean and entertaining, but it doesn't make sense to me that we should be penalizing those creators who are making that type of content. That's the kind of result that's going to cause more quality, good, family-friendly content to shrink while more mature content grows. So that's the problem. People are going to have an incentive to try to prove that they're not child-directed. This is that concern where you're going to have creators feeling like they need to maturify their content, maybe adding language that's more for adults or topics that are more extreme where they can point out and say, look, I'm not child-directed. It is really concerning that the way that this regulation is being crafted is to focus on the content. Because even as an adult, if they're watching our content and they want to participate in it, they want to comment or they want it to be suggested, they lose that opportunity if it's deemed as child directed. And so adults aren't having the opportunity to have an experience as an adult. They're going to be treated like they're little kids. And it's not fair to those people in our audience who want to participate and have comments and other features that would be available on normal general audience content. I really appreciate you taking the time to 
talk about this issue, I just invite people to sign our petition, send a comment to the FTC. Us letting our voice be heard really can make a difference. The FTC is sincerely trying to do its best. They just didn't have as much information about how this was impacting creators or those negative unintended consequences that this was going to cause. Us letting them know about those things on a big scale can make a difference in the decisions they're making about changes that they should make on their enforcement and regulation of copyright. And so thank you so much, Jeremy, for being at the forefront of this. It really means a lot to a lot of us creators. We really can't stay quiet on this. We have to send as many comments as possible. You grains, you viewers, our subscribers, you matter so much. Without you, we cannot win this. So please make sure that you send a really polite and a very well written comment to the FTC. I'll leave the link down below. All these links were put together by Jeremy because he's been going to visit them and talk with them and they're very open. So it means that we just have to be very vocal and also sign the petition. I'll leave a comment that I wrote for them in description box below. And if you want a sample of something that you could potentially send to them, I'll leave a sample down below. Change it, tweak it to make it as personal to you and your experience as possible to make sure that they hear us out. Thank you so much, Grains. I will see you on Friday with a crafty or review video. I'll see you later.